Hello guys. Today in this video we will learn about process control block. When we are in school or college, we get an identity card. Why do we get that? It is to represent our identity. As there are a number of students, identity card is used for identification of information of different students in the college or school. So kind of similar to this example, in an operating system, multiple processes are created regularly, so how to keep track of each process. So all the information needed to keep track of a process is stored in data structure, which is called process control block, which we will study in this video. You can find my previous videos related to operating system here, and also below in description. So without wasting any time let's start the video. So let's start with the definition. As we seen at the start, for each process, the operating system maintains the data structure which keeps track of complete information about that process. This data structure or record is called as PCB, or process control block. The operating system creates the process control block as soon as the new process is created. All the information of process, or information related to execution of the process is present, in the process control block. Let us see one by one every attribute of PCB. So first is the process ID, let us see an example. Let's continue previous example, in a school or college each year thousands of students take admission, how does management keep track of every individual student? There can be students with same name, or with similar other details. So to uniquely identify a student each student is given a unique number, while registering to the school or college, generally called register number. So similar to this, operating system, or the CPU needs to identify each process uniquely, so the process ID is assigned to each process, as its unique identity. Process ID is a unique number given to a process by the operating system. Each process will have a different process ID. Next is the program counter. Let us consider a situation. While we execute the process there are different instructions in it. Let's say there are 10 instructions present in process. 5 get executed and the process gets out of CPU, for some IO operation, or any other process gets in the CPU, for execution which happens in multi-programming, and multitasking. So when the process comes back for execution, from where to start the execution? To solve this problem program counter is used, it acts like a pointer. It contains the address of next instruction to be executed. So when the process gets out and comes back, CPU can start the execution where the program counter is present. This is all about program counter. Next is process state, process can be in many states. Like for example, if we consider a boy. He can be sleeping, or running, or standing, or sitting, it defines what a boy is doing at that moment. Similarly process has different states. Process can be in new, ready, waiting, executing, blocked, suspended or terminated state. Like when the process is being executed by the CPU, it will be in executing state, or when the process get completely executed, it will be in terminated state, or when the process is in the main memory ready for execution, it will be in ready state. So process is currently in which state is present in process state. We will see process states in detail in the upcoming video in this series. Next in the line is priority, so again let's see a simple example. Let's say you are standing in a line to enter some function. One by one everyone is allowed to enter inside according to the line. And there comes a VIP person, the line will be stopped and VIP will be allowed to get inside. And after he does the line will get resumed. So definitely the VIP has been given more priority than the common people. Similarly some processes have high priority and some process have low priority. The operating system processes have highest priority and the user processes, 
that we define have the lowest priority. So when CPU is executing a user process, and at the same time an OS process comes for execution, CPU will stop execution of user process, and start executing OS process. As the priority of OS process is high. This priority is stored in priority section. Next in line is register. Register is a small amount of fast memory, within the processor where CPU can store and change values required for execution of instructions. So as we saw before let's say half instructions are executed, and values in registers are as following. And the process gets preempted that means execution of process is stopped. Let's say CPU starts executing some another process with high priority. The values in register will get changed as new process will get executed. So when the previous process will get back with execution. How will it get back the values previously present in registers during its execution? To solve this problem the information is stored in register section, so that when the process returns it can continue the execution. Next is list of open files. So while executing any process it will read some files, or write some files. As given in the instructions. So to keep track of which files have been opened while the execution of process, the list of open files section is used. As if any file is not closed properly it may affect many things. Next is input output information, so any process may require some input devices to take some input for processing, or output devices to present the output during or after the processing. This list of input and output devices required for the process, is present in input output information. Next one is protection. So as there are multiple processes present we don't want any process to interfere in another process. Each process needs to be secured. To avoid the interference between processes there is protection present in the process control block. So we have covered all attributes present in PCB. As operating system creates the PCB, depending on different operating systems, there can be different attributes present in PCB. So that's all for today's video, hope you all understood the concept. Comment down below if you want a video on a particular topic related to operating system. Also if you have doubts queries or suggestions feel free to comment. If you find the video helpful like the video and share it with your friends, who need to clear the concept. And don't forget to subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon for new video updates. See you in next video.